What is the role of a speech and language therapist in supporting learners with intellectual disabilities? People sometimes think that speech and language therapists work on pronunciation, but that's not what we do. Our job is not to help people speak more beautifully. Rather, we help people who struggle to communicate because of difficulties affecting their speech, language, communication or swallowing. I'm sure you can imagine the implications of these kinds of difficulties. Not being able to ask for your basic needs to be met. Not being able to make friends with the children in your class. Not being able to participate in your learning and many of the other activities that make up everyday life. Communication challenges also go way beyond the obvious. They're often associated with behavioural difficulties and mental health problems. Because not being able to understand or express yourself causes a lot of frustration and confusion. And that, of course, greatly affects how people feel. So the role of the speech and language therapist is to identify the nature of the communication difficulty and then find ways to address the issue and support the person. The issue could be physical, like a cleft palate or hearing impairment. It could be developmental, like an intellectual difficulty or language disorder. It could also be neurodevelopmental, like dyspraxia, dyslexia and autism. Or it could be acquired through an illness or an injury, like a head injury or a stroke. Or it could have a psychological base, like selective mutism. So once the problem has been clearly assessed and defined, the speech and language therapist will work with that person to find ways to address the communication barriers more effectively. So the therapist may help that person to develop skills like language or speech skills or teach compensatory strategies like using alternative forms of communication such as signing or tech devices. And in this process, it's so important that the person with the communication challenge is involved in decision making at whatever level is possible. So they take part in setting their own goals because that makes them more meaningful and relevant. Now, because communication doesn't happen in a vacuum, a big part of our job is ensuring that the environment is a good fit. And by environment, I mean not only the physical space, but also the people in it. So that would mean making sure that learning is delivered at a pace that fits with the person's intellectual ability and that the people who interact with that person at home, school, college or work understand the communication difficulty and know how to provide the right support. That could mean adjusting the language they're using so it's more accessible or using alternative methods of communication like signing pictures or technology. So to help that process, speech and language therapists provide training to parents and educators and sometimes even peers to make sure that the environmental accommodations are in place, ultimately so the person can fulfill their potential. And by using an approach where we address the communication challenges and support the person with the best possible environment, we're demonstrating humanity and inclusivity, we're showing respect regardless of ability, and we're supporting that person with a communication toolbox so they can become the best version of themselves. Thanks for watching.